It's a really sad and difficult time for the Bryant family as Joe Jellybean Bryant, the father of late NBA legend Kobe Bryant and a former basketball star, has died at the age of 69. And while the family should be focusing on paying their last respects, unfortunately, they also have to focus a bit of energy on Vanessa Bryant allegedly shading the death. Child, what is it really about Vanessa and the Bryants? And why have Kobe's parents never accepted her? Let's settle this once and for all, y'all. Met yes. Vanessa at a young age. They told him, you bugging out. You don't need to get with this girl. You're going to meet 100 girls. He went against his parents, ended up meeting Vanessa, ended up being his wife. So Joe is said to have recently suffered a massive stroke that unfortunately led to his death. And LaSalle Men's Basketball confirmed the news, writing on X, we are saddened to announce the passing of LaSalle basketball great Joe Bryant. Joe played for the Explorers from 1973 to 75 and was a member of our coaching staff from 1993 to 96. He was a beloved member of the Explorer family and will be dearly missed. Now, Jelly Bean's death comes a bit over four years after the tragic passing of his son and granddaughter Gigi, who both died in a helicopter accident. As you may recall, Kobe Bryant, his daughter Gianna, and seven others died in a helicopter crash in January 2020 in Calabasas, California, as the group was making its way to a basketball tournament. That aside, obviously, Joe Bryant is remembered for his achievements in basketball, which include playing and coaching professionally both in the United States and in internationally after starring at LaSalle, where he averaged 20.8 points per game in two seasons with the Explorers. He was also a first-round draft selection of the Golden State Warriors in 1975, before being acquired later that year by the Philadelphia 76ers. Child, I have no idea what those accolades mean. But what I can tell you is that Jelly Bean had impeccable expertise when it came to basketball, and judging by the tributes that poured in, his legacy lives on. For instance, the Sixers said in a statement, Joe Jelly Bean Bryant was a local basketball icon whose legacy on the court transcended his journey across Bartram High School, LaSalle University, and his first four NBA seasons with the 76ers from 1975 to 79. Our condolences go out to the Bryant family. You know, for Joe, there was probably nothing more exciting than having his son Kobe not only follow in his footsteps, but also surpass him. And they were doing great in the beginning. But unfortunately, the relationship became strained after Kobe joined the Los Angeles Lakers and embarked on what would be his Hall of Fame career in the NBA. As for what caused the rift, one was money issues and the other was his wife, Vanessa. Now about the money, Kobe shared in an ESPN interview in 2016 that he had not spoken to his parents in three years after they auctioned off several items of his memorabilia without his consent. He told ESPN at the time, our relationship is ish. I say to them, I'm gonna buy you a very nice home and the response is, that's not good enough? Then you're selling my stuff? Then after the outrage, Kobe's parents released a statement saying, we were regret our actions and statements related to the Kobe Bryant auction memorabilia. We apologize for any misunderstanding and unintended pain we may have caused our son and appreciate the financial support that he has provided to us over the years. But Kobe was already super mad and did not understand why his parents would do that to him. In fact, Kobe said he was proud of his sisters, Sharia and Shia, who had learned to accept, unlike his parents, that he had removed money from his relationships with them. He said, they're very smart, college-educated women. I'm really proud of them. Them. They were able to get their own jobs, get their own lives, take care of themselves. Now they have a better sense of self, of who they are as people. Instead of being resentful because they were relying on me, it was tough for me to do. But it's something you have to do, something you have to be very strong about. So like I said, other than the money situation, another reason why Kobe was not on good terms with his parents was because they never approved of his relationship with Vanessa. For starters, they thought that Kobe was too young to be marrying Vanessa when they did. And for reference, they got engaged shortly after Vanessa turned 18 before tying the knot in 2001 when Kobe was 21. To make matters worse, Kobe and Vanessa had only been dating for six months before getting married, which his parents felt was rushed and not enough time to truly get to know each other. The disapproval was so bad and so loud that Joe and his wife Pam Bryant did not attend Kobe and Vanessa's wedding. Honey, it wasn't just about the age, by the way. Reportedly, Kobe's parents wanted Kobe to marry an African-American woman, but Vanessa was a Latina, so they were against the marriage. Apparently, the other reason 
reason they disapproved was because Vanessa had not finished college when she married Kobe, which his parents saw as a lack of ambition and stability. In addition, there were also reports that Vanessa was very controlling in the relationship and tried to isolate Kobe from his family, which further increased the tension. Remember, there were also claims about Vanessa being a gold digger, including from her stepfather who said in 2011, after Vanessa filed for a divorce from Kobe over infidelity allegations, that she was a money grabber like her mom. Yeah, the divorce was called off, but Vanessa's stepdad had already told TMZ her mother taught her well to wait for the 10-year mark before divorcing. In California, it's considered a long-term marriage, and then she gets paid for life or until she remarries, just like her mother is doing to me. I have to pay her mom $1,800 every month, and clearly they don't need it. So is this how Kobe's parents also viewed Vanessa, like a money grabber? And let me not even begin with the allegation that Kobe took care of Vanessa's mom more than his own parents, which supposedly made his parents feel some sort of way. Child, I don't know about Vanessa being controlling or about her being a gold digger, but what I can tell you is that the situation stressed the hell out of Kobe. In fact, for those who recall, in the 2001 NBA Finals, the Lakers went up against the Philadelphia 76ers and Philadelphia was Kobe Bryant's hometown and his parents lived there, but they did not show up for any of his games during the NBA Finals as they were not speaking to him at the time. This is actually what led to that iconic image of Kobe sitting in the shower with the championship trophy and looking sad. Anyway, a lot of that relationship was also explored in the book, The Rise, Kobe Bryant and the Pursuit of Immortality, which was published two years after his death. One of the people who shared their experience was Jeremy Treatman, a former assistant coach of Kobe Bryant during his time at Lower Marion. Jeremy said that he noticed something really interesting during his time at the burial ceremony, which is that Vanessa talked about Gigi just as much as she did about Kobe. And during the ceremony, there was no mention of Kobe's high school days or of his parents. He also specifically said that the iciness between Vanessa and Kobe's parents was still apparent. And from what Jeremy saw, they never interacted with or so much as glanced at each other before, during, or after the ceremony. Baby, all this certainly explains Vanessa's reaction to Joe's death as she posted about the passing on her Instagram story saying, sending our condolences upon hearing the news of my father-in-law's passing. We hope things would have been different. Although the times we spent together were few, he was always sweet and nice to be around. Kobe loved him very much. I mean, a Bryant sending her condolences to the Bryant on her Instagram story is wild. And you know what? A lot of people definitely noted how it's obvious from her message that there were hurt feelings or a strained relationship. And I see how it kind of looks like a nice way of saying, RIP, but we hated each other's guts. Well, one person wrote in response to the post, didn't have to say all that, should have kept it short but sweet. But of course, let's inform everyone we had issues and that I'm still bitter. But hey, your son loved you. No class at all. Someone else added, timing is bad for bringing up personal family differences. No need to insert internal issues in a message of condolences. Bad mistake and probably piss off Colby's grieving mother even more. On the other hand, we also had people saying that Vanessa handled the situation the best way she could. Like this person who wrote, I respect the honesty. The world knows there was beef. If she wrote a long heartfelt message, she'd have been called fake. She'd have been equally criticized for saying nothing. So she was real and I respect it. But hey, that's just me. But what do you think? Was Vanessa's message just okay given the circumstances of the relationship? Or do you think she should have handled that better? In fact, what are your thoughts on the relationship still being strained many years later? Drop those thoughts in the comments section below.